I mean, this, this house of God in humanity is older than King Solomon. Um, but okay, so back to the sun. Think about the Son of God, the temple of the sun. What, what is the significance of the sun? Well, the sun is the crossover between the celestial orb and the terrestrial orb. Okay, so the sun is the light in the temple of the sun, and the temple of, sun, of the sun within the house of God is where we congregate and where we meet as fellow craft fellows in masonry. And so, um, the sun is between the celestial and the terrestrial orbs on Jochen and Boaz, the right and left pillar at the entrance into King Solomon's temple. And now, I'm going to talk more about this visual binary symbolism, the visual binary intelligence, right? And the real significance for those who have the Masonic Friendship Cube. Um, visual binary intelligence, that's you walk into the Masonic Lodge and within, once you've crossed through those twin pillars, you are now in the house of God. Um, and uh, now, what we can say about the celestial and terrestrial pillars is that they respect, re they reflect, they respectively represent the cosmist, the cosmist, cosmic consciousness merging with the Terran, and Terran means Earth, Terra, right? And so the Twin Towers, again, are in symbolism a, uh, a depiction of the Cosmist and the Terran worldview coming together in the Temple of the Sun. So you go to any Christian church, and you'll hear about the Son of God and the Temple of the temple erected to the Son of God, the solar temple, right? And that's really just respecting the light, re reflecting the light, right? And so, what we're doing inside Freemasonry is in concordance with the plan of God. And what we're doing is we are initiating people into the house of God and the temple of the sun, which is the temple of light. The temple of inner light. External light usually is a symbol of the known. And internal light is sometimes thought to be esoteric. Masonry celebrates both. The wisdom of the known world and the esoteric wisdom that unites us energetically as one brotherhood into the body of Christ and through the body of Christ, through the bo body of the King, the Sun King, the King of Kings, right? The Lord of Lords, the Lord of Hosts. And I'll tell you, in the 21st century, the word host seems to have, well, it seems to have a particular meaning that is important, to me at least. The term host, to me, it seems almost like a hub of consciousness. Okay? So we look at Lord of Hosts, and we see Lord of Hub of Consciousness. Right? And more so, Lord of Hosts is a kind of spiritually anointed esoteric consciousness. Lord of Hosts. Right? And uh, this is associated into, more and more, the language that we're moving forward with, the Friendship Cube Group. You want to go to Lord of Hosts. Lord of Hosts is, is, the, is the intelligence that sees through other intelligences, right? And so energetically and consciousness, and in consciousness, right, first we start to step up the ladder into higher levels of energy in our bodies and in our 
enlightened minds, once we're Christian, right, once we've been baptized into the knowledge that consciousness is united, and consciousness is a reflection of gravitational bodies, including the celestial orb, or the, or the, or the, uh, the galactic gravitation of the spiral, right, the galactic um, level of energetic vibration, the solar level, which is a crossover between the galactic and the terrestrial, and then finally the terrestrial grounding Earth consciousness, right? So what will happen as we move up in not only consciousness but energy, like quantum information and quantum energies, what will happen is our, our consciousness will ascend into the light into both forms of light, the external light of the known and the internal light of enlightenment. And so energetically and in consciousness, we can go through these three stages as a civilization, as one mind operating through many bodies, right? And we do have the technologies in our communion to make this happen, to make one mind from many. And this has been happening ever since before Egypt, but it happened in Egypt, it happened in Rome, it happens in the noble families that congregate together and have some sort of um, cohesion through God. And so we're going to ascend from an earth consciousness, a consciousness that unites the planet and makes us one, as one earthly civilization, one parliament of man, one federation of the world, one peaceful United Nations, that some people have called the order of the new world, a new order of the ages, right? The new age, where consciousness is united for the planet and for peace, right? And we start seeing the delicacy or, or the sensitivity of our biosphere and start, reflect, uh, start respecting, start serving what is needed for our earthly body, right? We start recognizing that the earth is our body. My body is not my skin-bound ego. My body, my tissue of life, is inextricably bound with the biosphere of planet earth. And so we have to start thinking, and like, it's a Christian thing to think for the earth, right? And to think with the earth to be grounded, right? To be the salt of the earth. To be a down-to-earth human being. And we can start thinking energetically and in consciousness to unite with the needs of the biosphere. And when you look at like uh, post-industrial civilizations, like we see in, in the fictional movie Avatar, these post-industrial civilizations are sort of symbiotic with the consciousness of the planet, right? And they really respect. And so I think we're going to evolve, like humanity might evolve into a sort of post-industrial, super-conscious, united civilization that, uh, that respects the biosphere. And, you know, I'm willing to speak about this to the people of the world who are enlightened, because, in my opinion, the first stage, entrance into the house of God, means that we have to stand up for the planetary consciousness. And then when we move into the temple of the sun, we have to reverently acknowledge the gravity of the light that we have now stepped into. Right? And that means that we are a solar being. We are one being in Christ. Right? And so not only have we solved all the, plant, all the problems of the planet and finally united as one, as one consciousness, now we look to the Son of Christ. Now we look to the Son of God. Now we look to the Temple of the Son and truly unite. And that is really when Christ starts to return, inwardly and externally. Right? So we're, we've become a post-industrial hyper-conscious, hyper-connected, unified consciousness that can travel freely throughout the solar system for the well-being of our collective, our oneness, right? So now, not only are we globalists, but we're Christian collectivists. 
right? And in Christ, we realize we are one. We treat the other as we treat ourselves, knowing that our consciousness is united with the gravity of the light, the sun.